Getting the black pieces, and it looks like we're facing a Serbian opponent. So those are pretty aggressive in general. Let's see if he's ready to deal with our our little advance, uh, Caro. Oh, he goes knight f3. I'm just gonna go for like cd and then uh, bishop to g4. This is the proper move order. Very common mistake here that beginners make all the time. They start with cd knight c6 and then. White has additional knight c3 move, and then you can no longer get the ideal bishop in. So when you see knight f3, white has a threat of uh, dc, so then... Um, yeah, just take, get our bishop pin, and uh, just play e6. Knight e7 goes to f5. Whenever they play h3 in this structure, we give up the bishop for the knight. And yeah, I can just take, go knight f5, hitting d4. A lot of the times your opponents will blunder this pawn. My opponent didn't. Uh, this time, unlucky. We're gonna castle. Rook c8 next. We're only taking on e3 when a move like g4 or bishop g4 happens when they are forcing it. And now, we're gonna go rook c8, setting up the sneakiest trap of all time, because he's gonna play b4. Or even against rook c1. Guys, okay, here. You want to pay attention. If you're sleeping, wake up. Because this is really the position where everybody goes wrong. When in fact, black is actually almost already winning. After this move. And no, it's not queen b6. Stop playing queen b6 in these positions. It's so bad. It's bishop g5. And now the game will literally win itself. Uh, or maybe not. Wait. What's wrong with this move? Actually, first time I'm uh, I'm seeing this move. Wow, what's wrong with that? There must be something wrong with it. Otherwise, I would have been familiar with it. <laughs> All right, you can go back to sleep now until I find uh, the refutation. Wait a minute, this looks hard to believe. 94 bishop c1, I mean bishop e3, queen g5, I'm considering. Okay, I think it's maybe just bishop takes on e3, queen g5, honestly. I don't see 94 working. Yeah, it's simply like not working. So, yeah, it's got a bit of this, and then the queen move. Hitting e3. Let's see how he's planning to defend. With a rook. Hmm. Okay, somehow opponent is like surviving, which is very surprising. Very, very surprising to me. Like usually this is just like a straightforward win for black. Uh, okay. Can we get our knight over there? Would that be so bad? I think I'm gonna just go f6. Take you with the rook, just try to bring more pieces and put pressure against his king. It's not like winning or anything, but I think kinda nice. Okay, so he's rerouting. We need to play like g6 to be safe. Could also consider rook g6, but uh, I think simply this move is nice. So we can move the knight. Maybe actually now we have 93 ideas. Yeah, that's actually a big trick in the position. He needs to watch out. That's a huge threat on the next move. Wow. I hope he blunders it somehow by playing b4. That would be like pretty huge. Rook f3. Okay, I mean, that's blundering knight h4, so we win there as well. So he was defending against knight e3, guys, you see. He had rook e3. So he saw that, but now knight h4 simply wins. Rook f6, queen g2, mate, and he has no way to deal with that. He's simply losing a rook, so that's just a win now. And I'll show you guys why uh, knight e3 was such a big uh, problem for my opponent. Because there were, like, a lot of tactics where his pieces were dropping. So maybe the car is still like a first win as I as I said a bit earlier in this game, but I'll have to like check this queen d3. 
It's so rare. Nobody really plays Queen D3 there. But I think we had decent reaction. And see, we just won in like 21 moves. But yeah, the point is... I'm just actually going to show this. Um, yeah, I'll turn on the analysis board. You see, it's like dead lost here already. And yeah, apparently I had one mistake. Hmm. Curious what it was. So basically I knew everything uh, from prep until here. And he played queen d3, which was a good move apparently. Uh, shame on opponent. Yeah, okay, queen d3 is uh, apparently a reasonable move there. It's first time I'm seeing it. Generally, the white players are just blundering here. Like, okay, guys, I'm just gonna give you, like, this insight. This is, like, really precious stuff. So, you really want to save this video in your playlist. Like it, share it to your friends, because... Why the... I mean, black has so many cool traps here. Just imagine, you played rookie one, you lost as white. Knight takes d4, black is winning. Let's say you play like uh, bishop takes a 92, as a lot of people would do. Okay, guess what? Black is again winning after 94. There's like a very cool trick that uh, you can simply take. And the rook is uh, hanging on c1. And against this, there is like a intermediate check. And we take back with the rook. And that's a win. So that's not good. Another mistake is queen d2, where we have takes and queen g5, hitting it, and if he plays like in the game, we can just take as the queen is pinned. This line is like so trappy, it's just like so uh, nice to play, you can just get so many free wins as black. This is why I'm gonna recommend this uh, c5 against the advance in my uh, upcoming uh, chessable course on the Cairo. We'll have to include this queen d3 move, though, that was played by my opponent. And okay, still, this was like reasonable what we played. Apparently, f6 is a blunder. Wow. He had bishop takes on d5 that I missed. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I was thinking to start with this and then f6. Also, this is something that was on my radar, but apparently not so good either. Yeah. Okay, I'm not like really gonna take uh, for granted what the chess.com engine says in this position. I'll have to do more research uh, about this. I think, uh, yeah, just perhaps taking on e3 and playing 97 to f5, hitting the weak pawn makes sense, but uh, I'm not super sure whether that's best. So we'll keep that on hold for now, but we got a very nice uh, initiative here. And after g6 top move, Look at this threat, guys. Like, let's say he plays b4, then just knight takes on e3. And this is just crashing. Look at this. So, we're threatening queen takes on g2. And also the f1 rook. So, if he takes with the queen, we've got check. We win a rook. Already the exchange. He cannot take because the queen drops. And if he takes uh, with the rook, then the guy on f1 drops. Hey, we've got Jonathan with the five gifters. Thank you for that, buddy. Appreciate it. Too kind. Hope you enjoy this uh, little car or clown fiesta that we had, but managed to get a win in 21 moves, so felt pretty good. Yeah, and like, as I was saying, G6 is like literally defenseless against this threat. I'm just winning. So, um, got the game. Okay, not too bad. After like so many dodgy games, this one feels pretty good. Even though it was not, like, quite as straightforward as I wanted it to be, we managed to get it. Holy shit, I just uh, spilled my coffee. Jesus Christ. Somebody has to clean up this place now. Do we have any volunteers? Alright, we'll worry about it later. Okay, getting the black pieces and the opponent goes for e4. Let's see what he's got in store for us uh, against the rock solid Karakhan. It is the two knights, and just for for those that are like really the big Karakhan experts, I'll give you one hint. G six is pretty interesting in this position, but we're gonna play the easiest uh, move, just trying to get back into the Tarta cover, because rarely they're gonna play Queen E two, which is like the most ambitious move there that. It's, it's super rare that they're going to do this. Okay, that's bishop c4. Now, uh, if my memory works, 
I think Edwin Lamy recommends knight a6 in his course. I think bishop d6 is what Selitsky gives and keep it simple. I'll try this move. I think, uh, yeah, just preparing to meet queen e2 with bishop e7 back, just avoiding the endgame. And uh, he, when he plays h3, I don't think we really mind it that much. Just play uh, knight d7 or rook e8 to begin with. I think this is fine. What is the main idea of the pawn cube? I mean, it's just nice. You just get a pawn cube and you win. There's no idea. What part are you missing? <laughs> pawn cube just wins by force. It should be like banned by the rules of Fide Chess. That's how strong it is. <laughs> uh, okay, d4, just knight f8. Always get in this maneuver. I think I might just uh, play bishop e6 next, try to shut down his bishop. Bishop f5, not bad either. But I think uh, bishop e6 is nice, trying to shut down this piece. Happy to take with a knight, of course, because it's putting pressure in the center. Yeah, just taking with a knight. Now queen c7, rook a d8, and uh, black feels uh, very comfortable in this line. Just bringing the pieces over. If he pushes c4, it's just going to be weakening d4 so much. I think it might just be worse if he plays c4. But then I don't get what the point of b3 could be, and I might be actually playing c5 anyways. Okay, now c5 would be a bad move because it allows him d5, and he gets the... Protected pass pawn, and we can never attack that pawn. But this rook e2, and the pawn on d4 feels really vulnerable. Really, really vulnerable. Okay, how do we actually like take advantage of it? I'm trying to think. Oh, there's bishop c3, rook c1, and then do we have like uh... oh, there's there's like knight e4. Bishop d4, rook e2, queen e2, bishop d4. Ah, but then knight e4, rook d4, queen e8, I get back rank mated. We don't want that, do we? Okay, we start with this. It has to be good. I'm gonna do rook e2, and now I'm thinking this. Rook c1. Then it has to be something like knight e4 or bishop d4. Let's say bishop d4 we play. He takes with the bishop, and then like c5 is easy move to... Gain advantage. So bishop c3, rook c1 takes. He takes with the knight. And then like what? Still c5 easy move to take advantage. No? What am I missing? I don't think I'm missing anything, guys. You tell me. I think this just wins. Boop. Take this. Main point is that we take with check in a lot of lines. Then just c5 comes... He has like everything. Yep, c5 now. Are you gonna stop this? You're not. I think we're just gonna be up a pawn. Okay, maybe not super easy to win. But up a pawn is nice. Wait, so we take now. He takes with a knight. Okay, I thought he cannot uh, go for this. Hmm. Wait a minute, so queen f4, knight f3, how do we win that? Um, okay, maybe simply we have knight f4 and then knight f3, knight e2 is a move. Yeah, maybe just knight f4 here, but then knight b5. Huh. Wait a minute, guys. I'm missing the win here. Maybe there's no win. Could you believe that there uh, might be no win? That would be heartbreaking. Okay, okay. I'm starting to settle that. He might have... Uh, got a bit lucky with it. I'm gonna try my luck. Hmm. Knight 
time management uh, <laughs> worse than ever. Okay, I've got like some tricks. Like queen f3, there's rook d4, like knight b5. Knight b5 kind of a decent move for him. Maybe still queen a5 is strong. Yeah, queen a5 actually pretty strong there. Also, like, I can take d2 and then... Uh, take d2, he takes c7 and... I guess endgame is equal there. So knight b5, queen a5 has to be... the way to go, putting pressure on the rook. And if he takes, we take with the rook. And queen f3... Maybe queen d2. Rook f1... Okay, still not very simple. So knight b5, like rook d2, knight c7, rook d1, rook d1. I mean, I can play a move such as g5, and that's like uh, pretty safe. Yeah, he finds it. Okay, I'm gonna try to play it this way. Not sure this is the best. Trying to put some pressure on this rook. Uh, okay, wanted to take like this. Queen f3 now. Queen d2. Attack and defend. Rook f1 I was calculating. But then I couldn't like come up with uh, with something. Maybe just like a6. Not so easy to find a square for the knight. Maybe knight c7. Oh, he actually played it. Queen d6, knight d5. Wait, what is this? Okay, let's give check. King h1 only move. Okay, he keeps finding good moves. I don't like this. Knight d4, queen e2 maybe. On queen b7. Trying to play for f2. This is becoming really tense. Queen e3, I just take and play that endgame. Knight, uh, well, maybe not. I have to take and... Uh, yeah, knight c6, it's an equal endgame nevertheless, but... Uh, gotta like really speed up. Knight d5, king of faith, uh, and uh, knight e7, I've gotta play. Try to get rid of the knight. And d4, just uh, like knight c6 or something. Try rook e8. Important not to take, even though the knight is annoying. The knight is pretty annoying. Important not to take it. f5. Need to bring uh, my king. I don't know how. I'm supposed to bring my king uh, to the center, but was not very easy. Now I can make this move. Uh, okay, b5. Oh, he also gave me that check. Okay, I'm gonna bring my knight towards e6. Take there. Wait, what? That's just a pawn? Oh, I blundered. Ah, he took it the right way. Oh! Got a dirty flag, this guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he tried to dirty flag me, but we did dirty flag him. Uh, okay, so I think... Yeah, I don't know. The game was... It really felt to me like he dodged, some, dodged the bullet there. Like, after bishop c3, it definitely feels minus one-ish. We'll see if I'm wrong. After regarding bishop c3, it definitely is minus one-ish.
Uh, I mean, apparently just equal. Surprisingly, it's like really surprising that white survives here. Like the pawns are so weak. Yeah, he found like best play for like so many moves. Oh, I missed queen c6. Oh, that would have been a killer. I don't even get it why, but f3 and we just take. I missed like winning one move. How can I miss that? I had the win there. I played queen a5, like, just because uh, queen c6 was not a thing with his knight on d4, it never occurred to me during the game. But if I just play queen c6 here, it's just a win. Yeah, okay, but then this position is very hard for him to defend. Like, he needs to find rook cc2 move in order to hold equality. This is definitely very dangerous. I've got uh, all kinds of ideas in the position. He blunders, I don't see, of course. I go for this line that I saw before. For some reason, 93 is stronger, but I don't get why. Like, what's the point of rook d1? Queen a2 wants the computer, but okay. Nobody plays like that. And yeah, this is just equal. Okay, knight e2 is nice because you're in time to play rook d2 and activate. Didn't see that idea. I mean, I saw it, but I didn't um, evaluate it in time. And I should have started with b5, I think, undermining right away. I was kind of trying a bit too subtle to provoke this pawn move, and I lost a lot of time, and then I was worse. I mean, not like dramatically worse, but here already it feels uh, unpleasant. I could, of course, just repeat the position, but I was like <laughs> on seconds with this guy now. He also dodged the bullet here with rook f6. A lot of people would blunder rook d5. and Well, <laughs> apparently it's still winning down a knight. A pawn is too fast. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But anyways, um, you really want to remember uh, the development that we've got early on in the opening. So just uh, got knight f8, got rid of his bishop. We're ready to play c5 next. I mean, black has no problems whatsoever here. Just very comfortable position. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Let's go uh, next game. We're maybe three games away. Can we make it to 21? Is that the dream? Okay, guys, getting the black pieces and... Getting ourselves uh, a Karo Khan actually against the interesting pawn of. So now, taking with a queen is a bit of an inaccuracy. So the trick is to try and take it with a knight. And against any checks, I know we're supposed to play like knight bd7. And now I don't really remember if we're supposed to start with a6. And I'm just gonna get the fianchiaro. That's like usually how it happens. And... We just try to collect the pawn like a little bit later on in the game. Now, I could definitely do that. I can do a6, b5, bishop, b7 as well. Is that like overextending? I don't know. Hmm. That would be like kind of nice. However, I feel like this is a bit simpler. Maybe bishop, g4 idea next. As well. I mean, I could really get the bishop, but I don't want to like give up, um, give it up for the knight. So I'm just gonna take here, take back uh, that way. I think. Um, yeah, he plays that move, pretty standard. Ninety-five. Um, hmm. I need to get uh, the light squared bishop developed. So maybe just bishop e6. Then rook c8. e6 is not like the nicest squares of all time. But if it gets the job done, it's interesting. Do I like the Zuckertort? I think it could be a nice and interesting um, surprise weapon to have. But kind of hard to make Kole your main... Uh, opening because it works specifically when black is playing e6 early in the game if they play like with d5 knight of 6 and they keep the light squared bishop active they can usually just transpose into a good version of the caro 
uh, in the exchange. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of how I see the Zucker tart. Mm. Can take, like, anything is interesting here. I'm going to do it this way just so we can bring the rook. But taking with the bishop was also not bad. My idea is in case of bishop c4, I can go rook takes and we're winning two minor pieces for um, for the rook, which is definitely putting us ahead. And okay, I mean, just going to bring rook into the game. He wants like what? Bishop a3? Maybe that could be the idea. Trying to hit my uh, e7 pawn. The bishop is like a little bit vulnerable, it feels, but I don't see a way that we can deflect this queen. He's like knight g4 move. I mean, that's hardly a thing. Okay, actually, his main point is bishop c4 now that I think of it. So, gotta watch out for that. And um, yeah, that's literally why he played uh, b3. Well, knowing that, I think... Queen e6 is not such a bad idea. And look at this, guys, now, because this is uh, on the board. Also, by the way, maybe queen e4 was a bit smarter, just forcing the queens off. Uh, yeah, queen e4 was so much better, just way more active. I don't know why I retreat. But yeah, I was saying that we have now ideas to play for knight c3. Maybe I was not really saying it, but was thinking it. Gonna bring my rook, just a um, solid play, um, kind of waiting. Bishop c4, I mean, there are stakes, but I don't really want to improve his structure. So I think I'm just going to go bishop d5 and then e6. Maybe the queen could go back onto the uh, back rank with b8 in case he gets hit. My rooks are like nicely connected. Bishop d5, take it with a knight. Um... Okay, e6 feels like a nice move. Maybe e6, b5 is still uh, very much an idea. Oh, take it with a knight. I'm happy that he takes. I think he definitely should have kept the tension. That's like a typical mistake that they do in like all rating ranges. They just uh, release the tension way too early. Okay, now actually it's interesting strategical idea to take. Because it's not so easy for him to bring the bishop and my knight is pretty strong. I'm actually really thinking about that. Probably it's like unnecessary. Oh. Yeah, well, actually, you know what? I think we're going to try to make it fun. We're going to do this. Give up the fee and get all. It's not like completely risk free, but it's interesting. I felt like maybe just queen before. Maybe queen over there. Gotta speed up with us uh, a little bit. Definitely position is fine, but. Uh, can't really say the same about my time. Okay, so I can maybe do like rook c1 or queen f4 directly. Which one should I aim for? Mm. Okay, I feel like I'm just gonna go for this. Rook d5, uh, yeah, rook c1 and we should be good. Wait, this doesn't really work. Just uh, He just handed me the win. That is very much appreciated, but we're going to be up a rook, so. Taking these and no counterplay. Endgame, I think, was maybe equal slash slightly better, but of course, it helps when they blunder. So, just got to keep, like, <laughs> a balanced position and you know that your opponents are... Generally gonna do the work for you.
Okay, activating the rook. And he resigns. Uh, all right, I'm curious how the end game was there. And also very interested to see what computer thinks about my uh, decision to give up the Fianchiaro bishop. That was definitely something pretty double-edged. Also, like here, just queen e4 is like, as I was saying, queen e4 just gets such an easy game. Queen d6 is like second best move, but it's like kind of meh. Queen e4 would have been like so much nicer. Okay, I mean, this is a move. Rook d8. I mean, bishop d5. e6 is a move. Take with a knight. And okay, of course, just... Don't give up the bishop, you moron. Play queen e7, which was above, uh, I mean, among my candidates. But I was like, okay, let's make it interesting. Oh, and apparently we're still slightly better. So actually, maybe this is not as bad as I thought, but queen f4 was a bit rushed. I was actually, ooh, I missed the fact that I have queen d2 there. That would have been really uncomfortable for my opponent. Actually, completely missed this idea. And he has to take with the bishop, but then I go rook c8 and I like... My knight is completely dominating the D file, and I've got play on the on the C file. True, the error margin here is pretty slim since he's literally threatening rook D5 with queen F6 kind of stuff, and I'm getting mated. But apparently, I can go queen H4, and the computer is chilling. I don't really know what to say about that. I went for like the safer move. I was expecting him to just trade and. I was looking at this line in my head, rook c7, I was kind of trying to evaluate it, but I felt like something like this should be reasonable for me. Oh, I missed there is bishop c1, so in fact I'm supposed to start with rook d2 right away, which maybe was even my intention now, if that there is check. And apparently only move for him to hold equality is bishop there. Now he wants to mate me, so I gotta make a loof. Probably I would do that. And okay, he gets a7 pawn, I've got like 93. Definitely, I think, enough uh, for equality, but uh, not more. Not more than that, guys. But, of course, when opponent is kind enough and plays rook takes on d5 in that position is very welcome. Just uh, <laughs> give to me the free rook. Okay, for those of you that are like wondering why on earth would he make that move, you're just paying these people so you can record the videos. I'm not. And not because I don't want it, just because I cannot afford it. So here, after rook takes on d5, the point is, if I take the rook, yeah, like um, some people would do, let's say, then the queen remains undefended. And that was like uh, his whole tactic. And also if I like, oh, all right, let's trade queens and then take his rook. He has intermediate move with rook d8. Then if I like take, I can go GF and, uh, well, he ends up uh, with the extra bishop. So that was like his idea. Now I was, of course, seeing everything in advance because I'm a genius and that didn't work. Wouldn't allow such things. Only maybe in the games that don't make it to YouTube. Uh, but anyways, anyways, I think we can go for the next one. Okay, okay, let's just jump right into the game and okay, looks like we are playing uh, this guy again. We played against him with the white pieces and he was like 2100, so that was like an hour ago and now he's uh, 50 rating points <laughs> lower rated, so uh, anyways, facing the exchange, he plays with bishop to, uh, uh, bishop to d3 and uh, sorry guys, my nose is... Ah. And uh, something that <laughs> was annoying the, the hell out of me. Okay. Got exchange. Opponent goes bishop to d3. Which one should we go for? I feel like I'm just going to go for my pet line. With idea to meet c3 with a quick bishop g4, Ali Reza Firuzia style. Now on queen b3, the whole trick is that you play queen c7 and stopping their uh, typical uh, London system transposition. That's just threatening bishop f4, and when they do knight e2, threatening that, get, just get rid of it, and uh, go e6, knight c6, bishop d6, and 
easy game. Just very easy. Start with the bishop. Now knight e4 is pretty nice. Try to support it with f5. Is it called in Romania now? Yes, it's like uh, close to zero degrees. That's the temperature around here. Uh, wait, wait, wait. How do we deal with this? I can simply castle. Maybe trying f3. I think I'm just going to start hitting the knight. If he takes, taking with a pawn is pretty good. If f3, honestly, just knight f6 is pretty, pretty strong. And okay, bishop takes, I'm like happy taking with a pawn. Threatening to win his e5 knight. Just take there, I think, and knight c5 after. Pick up the e5 pawn if he takes back. Zero, these are rookie numbers. I'm having minus six here. Wait, is it? Are you trying to say that Romania is a pretty warm place? I don't know what to say about that. Okay, so if I take, I think his best move will be taking back. Then my bishop's under attack, I can move it. But I don't want to, like, take on h2. Maybe that's actually, like, crashing, you know. I'm just taking queen g3 coming, so on. I don't want that. Okay, e5 there. Looks weird. I want to make this move work. Do you think we can make that work? If he takes with a pawn, we take his knight, and he's got, like, weak pawns all over the place. I like that. <clears throat> Look at this. So pretty. h2 is under attack and we have such a nice pawn structure this is so beautiful king f2 well this is actually like really making it tempting so that i can take because queen g3 is like such a juicy move this position is the Cairo Khan dream. Yes, tell me about it. And just, uh, yeah, think of pushing. That's one idea that I have. Um, yeah, I think. Well, it's like really such a juicy pawn to take, but just I don't want you guys to like take these kind of pawns because usually it's pretty risky with his rook that's potentially ready to open up. So I think that would be not very good in long term. But okay, it's it's pretty good in short term. <laughs> tough decision. Very tough call. You know what? I'm just gonna grab. Who cares about uh, educational chess? Just give me my free pawn. You know, I cannot resist such things. You guys thought, like, I can resist this for, like, more than one second? I mean, you, you have to think about it, like, imagine you hand one candy to a kid. Like, seriously, for how long do you think he's gonna resist? <laughs> uh, can we just go queen e5? Just, uh, pinning and threatening bishop f4 and queen c2 just g6. Like that. Wanna do this? Hey, thank you for the prime, uh, Mr. Uh, Boom Bap. Appreciate it. Thank you for the subs, guys. Uh, also, a lot of like people that I never saw in the chat. So, you guys are welcome. Now we could do that move. Maybe even better than uh, G6. Stopping mate. As long as we don't get mated in one, this game should be winning. And now just Bishop F4. I'm like thinking of f4, queen h7, king f7, that like probably just wins a piece. Like, what is he even threatening there? Queen h5? Just take it. No? What am I missing? Okay, guys, just go for the. Wow, he, he like took that immediately. Like, boop. You missed that. But I'm like, oh, I've got 30 seconds. Let's not forget about that. Okay, 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 time to be... 
they think this game a bit more seriously. Wait, takes. Take the bishop. You've seen me before. Oh, I see. Are you now back to hunt me? Oh my god. I want the open file. Jeez, just give me the open file. Oh gosh, this, this game is like so... Uh, so tricky. I'm just like up a piece. Can't I just have my free win? I thought that's how it works, but maybe it's, it doesn't. Oh no. I thought this is gonna be just a free win, but this guy is like all of a sudden fighting. They gotta like activate a bit. Okay, let's check him. Okay, there's no way I'm gonna win this. Oh, forgot a bishop. Ah, ah, this is so bad. I don't believe that I'm losing this game against this guy. <laughs> I mean, still, I'm gonna do my best. More pain! Ah, so slow! Ah, no way this happened! Ah. <laughs> Alright, that was fun at least. <laughs> Alright. I guess this happens. <laughs> Hopefully we can get a smooth... Landa system win this time because I've been I've been really missing it, but we do get the black pieces. I don't mind the juicy Caro win either, so gonna try our best and uh, we do get to face the exchange. And an exchange with an early H3. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff, definitely. Uh alright, I'm gonna go. I could like start with a bishop f5, that's like the cleanest. I could also go knight f6, let him play bishop d3. Mm. Yeah, maybe it's a good strategy not to spend like so much time on the opening, but I really want to show you this little idea that he can use when he's trying to stop you from developing the light squared bishop. So you go bishop to f5 and you pray that he takes. If he doesn't, it's kind of unlucky. Okay, he already played bishop e3, so maybe I don't have to rush with uh, queen c7. And okay, frankly speaking, these positions are not that fun, but okay, I mean, now that he plays it in such version that he just lets me get in knight e4, f5, these are usually pretty nice. Knight over there. Thinking queen d7, I mean, I can also take it, obviously, but I would like to keep it. Just queen d7, stopping knight e6. Idea to castle, leave f3, maybe knight g3, maybe simply trade one of the knights, probably the more active one. Yeah, f3 indeed, I can take and then just follow it up with e5 right away. That looks pretty good, because otherwise he might play f4 himself and try to fix my pawn. So we need this, and we're in time when he pins me, I can castle, and I don't really mind the isolated pawn, because we do get a lot of play in exchange, so this even uh, gives me ideas of e4, but I'm still gonna castle d5, knight e5, black is just uh, very comfortable, queen d4 is a nice uh, 
Cork there winning the Queen, so he cannot do that, and he probably will step back to maybe even B1 would be best, but it's a bit too passive. Just D4 and probably were better. Uh, yeah, that I was thinking Rook C8 with D4 ideas. Ah, he goes Queen B3. Thinking Knight D3, Knight C5 could be an idea. But also think about harassing the Bishop. F4 is a move. Um, simply knight c4 also not bad. Knight takes trying to get rid of the weak pawn, but it becomes kind of dull after. Knight d3, maybe rook e7 I have to watch out for. How about I start with h6? Do this. Bishop f4, that's just double attack, so he has to go back. Wait, he just allowed double attack? What is this? Pretty big mistake. Hmm... Yeah, we just uh, <laughs> take these. But the position, I think, was already quite pleasant. Still not easy to win, but now it should be pretty much a technical win. Just grab, fight for the open file immediately. Mm -hmm. He's trying to keep. I mean, now infiltrating is usually just uh, crashing. I mean, I can try to bring my queen also. But I'll just play it uh, just the basic good old way. <laughs> infiltrating on the second, usually. That's the way to go. He's targeting my d5 pawn, I saw that in advance. Maybe I should have cared a little bit more about it. Maybe we just defend. C4 allows rook b2, so that's good for us. And maybe just queen e6, or actually just queen c6 is nice. Hmm, bishop f2. He may be playing for knight e3. Okay, really want to unpin, so knight e3, there is d4. Is it like such a good move? <clears throat> I'm starting to question my technique a little, but I guess that's what happens when you become old like me, so. Yeah, I'm just going to do d4. That was actually a ridiculous move. But played it anyways. Actually, maybe not that bad. CD4, Queen C2. Maybe forcing Queens off and uh, then it's pretty easy to win. Wait, it just goes there. How about Rook D7? Get out of here, friend. DC. Quite likely to happen on the next move, and uh, with that, we do get the rooks off. Yeah, you can take there. Mm. Yeah, just exchange, pick up pawn on a2, queen c3, rook a1 should be probably the easiest way to win this. Queen b3. Should we make it like rook f2, queen c3? That doesn't look very precise. Uh, I think maybe queen a6 is good now, just threatening rook a1. Pushing the pawn to d3, I mean, at this point, guys, you have... Uh, more than uh, one way to win this. Okay, I was about to do something that was not winning it, but now Queen e2 is just killing because he doesn't have a way to defend his bishop. I was thinking rook a1, but then bishop d4 and he gets some pressure. But now after this, it's just uh, GG. He's got like nothing. So I think, uh, yeah, this ended up being... 
quite a nice game. I mean, I just uh, got initiative from the opening and then he just made like a grotesque blunder. But besides that, we, I think, had a reasonable technique, just exchanging everything and ultimately finding ourselves into a mating position. So the opponent takes a little bit to realize, but... Uh, it's very possible that he just uh, left his desk annoyed of the fact that he just lost against such a weak player like me. But, oh, that's a queen sack. Holy, I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> I thought that I uh, blundered my rook or something. That was ridiculous. Oh, my. Oh, these games. That gave me, like... Oh my, that really scared the crap out of me. But I'm still gonna... I'm not gonna let him. Same motive. <laughs> wow. We do get a check the game. So, about the game. Pretty strange affair. I wanted to show you that if you can get into this structure usually black is already slightly better i mean you don't have to trust me you can ask the engine this is like very nice to play for black and one of the typical positions would be something like this one after c3 where you play knight e4 rook g8 maybe queen f6 long castle and most of the times white is losing in less than 20 moves in this line um opponent however didn't allow us he just played castle and Usually we just exchange and we have an equal game. It's true, I kind of rushed a little bit with uh, knight e4, but I really wanted to get in this f5 construction. He saw knight g5, good move, but apparently I've got something better. Ooh, I, I didn't even consider this. I could have taken and gone h6 because the knight has literally no squares. I would have won a piece, but I was just like kind of happy that I found e5 and... We were like really comfortable here. Well, it's equal. I thought it's like slightly better. But now, okay, after h6, yeah, I had bishop h4 only move. It's like slightly better for black, as I felt. But, um, well, once we get a knight on d3, just a um, winning position. And then the rest. Yeah, the rest was. I don't know whether d4 was such a good move. Okay, d4 top line. I thought it was. Very weak move, but uh, okay. D3 you can push, but uh, you don't need to push. You just need to get rid of all the pieces and then the chest speaks for itself. You know how they say. Then we just made. Okay, okay, okay. Got the win. Um, just go for the next game. The problem is when white slides the bishop to e2, I think that's pretty rare. Like, from my experience, they either allow the trade or they just take it, like, below 2200. I knew, like, sliding it back to e2 is a thing, but I don't think, like, anybody below 23, 2400 plays that, like, intentionally. <laughs> um, maybe they do, but I don't know. That's just my feeling. Uh, okay. And just go for the next one. <laughs> oh, man, I was like hovering over it. I wasn't sure where he's going to go. I mean, I had dodgy technique there. Like probably, wait, so what would be like a better technique? So I'm like. Yeah, okay. So like the better technique would be in this position to just go, I think. Queen e7 and just make two pre moves. Queen e7, queen g7 when it comes to pre moving there, but okay. <laughs> I'm not really like a bullet uh, guy. <laughs> In case you guys couldn't tell. <laughs> uh, we do get the black pieces again, meaning that, uh, yeah, time for more Karo and specifically the exchange. Ah, the Henrik. Uh, Henrik Carlsen variation, bishop b5 check. Alright, I'm just gonna go... Uh, 
Honestly, bishop d7 is awesome move here, but I think it's maybe a bit more instructive for you guys if I play knight c6. Because this is like, uh, yeah, he's probably going to castle and you're going to get distraction like a lot, even after he does that. So we're going to get the bishop out and against h3 we're going to take. Just because we already have the bishop and if you go back, okay, so he does it this way. Still probably going to answer it the same way. Just bishop e7 castle. Oh wow, opponent playing really, really, really strange. Ooh, he's like uh, really pushing. That's hmm, not something that I'm necessarily <laughs> used to see. Of course, it shouldn't be great. Probably just a simple move like a5. Stopping b4 and taking space should be good. And on h3, maybe I just keep the bishop. He goes queen a4, hinting towards knight e5. So maybe I just go... Uh, ah, actually, I cannot really go knight d7 because I'm, uh, I'm hanging the pawn, which I uh, actually missed in the first place. Hmm. Well... I think we might be in trouble. I don't know. <laughs> this opponent is something else. Queen c7, knight e5. I've got to like defend. But I don't know. I feel like we should be in a little bit of trouble. I don't know yet. F3. That doesn't feel like such a good move. But what do I know? I'm gonna go like knight d7, try to get rid of his knight. Probably will see bishop to f4 very soon. Gonna exchange. And like move my queen to b7. Keep an eye on this pawn. If the knight attacks the bishop, we step back. Now we can try to arrest his queen. And just get it into the end game. You know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that. So I'm not gonna give him a second chance to keep queens on the board. Just uh, trade right away. I've got a bishop pair. If I can somehow uh, double up on the a5, we just have this free pressure in the end game. So, um, yeah, definitely feeling quite good about it. If he doesn't take, maybe I just want to take one a4, play bishop c2, and pick up that pawn. So he either takes or plays knight e3, would be my guess. If knight e3, maybe bishop g6 simply. I mean, I could also take, but maybe just bishop g6, yeah. Still giving him the chance to take my queen. Now, I cannot take him bishop c2 because the knight covers it. That was the point. If he trades queens, obviously taking with a pawn. And, well, maybe I've got a way to force it now. Oh, I mean, maybe not really. Was rook there? Hmm. I definitely feel like I should be doing well here. I think this move just invites me to go bishop d3, b5, however. I'm gonna do this move first and see what his plan is. We can like retreat at worst case scenario. I'm thinking bishop b5, forcing queen takes pawn takes, but then he's got like knight c2. It seems that I'm losing b4 pawn. Which is not good news. Not at all. Maybe f6. Bishop g3, e5. I could see that working. I could have started with f6 as well. So he's got knight c2, f6, e5 I want. Then it's all about trying to undermine c5. So I want to take and open up the bishop. I missed this move. Oh, that doesn't work as rook a2. Okay, I think we should be doing well. a4, just bishop c5 and his rook is pinned, so that's not really making a threat. Rook c1 now, of course. Forgot about that. Uh, okay. 
no longer that sure how good of a position we have. I've got to be honest. I'm thinking rook a5, a4. And then just maybe bishop a6. Oh. Can d3 be like a good move? a4. This is becoming very tricky. Very, very tricky. Bishop d8, a4. Bishop a5. A, B, Bishop, B, 4, B, 6. I don't really want to see that on the board. I'm good. We don't need that. Could, like, Rook, A, 3, B, a move just to, like, stop these pawns? I don't know. Maybe. Just trying to, like, stop him from pushing. And Knight, C, 2, Rook, A, 2 is the point. Definitely not, uh... <laughs> not a very nice move to play, but, uh... Maybe it gets the job done. Okay, wondering, can we sack the exchange? Knight takes, bishop takes. Uh, rook d1, d3. I mean, that's a bit interesting. Can do rook a2, knight d4. And then maybe I've got... Uh, Yeah, I'm definitely getting under time pressure here. I want to do like a brilliant trick, but it's not going to be working. Okay, I think we have to play it that way. And just have to hope for the best. Man, this is like, it feels like such a good exchange sack, but maybe I'm, uh, I'm misevaluating. Got this as a frat. Okay, gotta like throw in the check here. He will take. Um, maybe rook e8. I'm not a fan of that move now because just king f1. Oh, so anyways. I think we keep. Oh no, no time. <laughs> no time. I feel like this is just better, but okay. Yeah, no time. It's definitely just better, but okay. What to do? No, that's so tricky. Not gonna be able to be in time. Oh, I missed rook d4. Jeez. No, that was good, but too slow. <laughs> I mean, this was like a tense game. I mean, I found the exchange sack. I don't know, this guy, like... Hmm, curious about, like, the game review there. I feel like this guy played uh, a bit better than his rating, like, start to finish. Yo, Mr. Birdfish, welcome. How are you? How's the car? Oh. Well, I got like a 79. Hmm. Oh, I missed Queen C3 there, apparently. Yeah, I was like completely winning. Yeah. Big for that, uh, Miss Funerella, but uh, too slow. Yeah, the exchange sack was definitely good. I was afraid to play c5 because of bishop d6, but maybe just rook d8. Yeah, rook d8. Definitely had to exchange sack, and even this position is like, uh, now that the king is in the center, I'm just better. Should be an easy win now. These pieces are like so bad, but... Uh... <laughs> Cannot do much with six seconds there. Yeah, that was uh, 
That was pretty strange. His opening was like uh, really suspicious. If I was bad, I should just pay attention to... He's got like one threat, which is this. And if I basically defend against that, uh, we have no problems. But I played a5, which is like completely ignoring. So the opposite. <laughs> but even this, it's like... It's very solid for me like the whole time. I mean, before... Yeah, I should just be basically just take this and the bishop and play this end game. I was like a bit unsure how are we like gonna win these pawns, but uh, yeah, I guess just the simple way you should do it. <laughs> I was thinking of that, but I thought it's a bit too slow. Um, 